I'm Jennifer Sanasi. You're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio today by celebrated photographer Adrian Stern. We're going to be chatting about the 21 Icons Project. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Good, thanks. Thank you for joining me. No problem. Now, 21 Icons, an amazing project. You just had your auction at the end of February. Did, you, did it go how you were expecting it to go? Yeah, it's a silent auction, so it'll close at the end of this month, mm -hmm. but um, we've done very well. Mm -hmm. the, the Mandela portrait had already been sold for two million rand, mm -hmm. all the money going to charity, and it's just been a, it's been a really wonderful success mm -hmm. story, the whole project. Well, the event I'm speaking about, I guess it was not the official auction, but it was the auction and gala dinner. Did that go how you expected it to go? Absolutely. It was really nice to yeah. see all those people in a room. We had a lot of icons. Kumi Naidu and Lulu Singo and Evelina Shabalala and all these really wonderful people in mm -hmm. the one room. It's interesting that it took an Australian to take photos of, of all of these people and bring them together. What inspired you to actually um, go after such a huge project like this? I think it was the experience here in South Africa and, and understanding perhaps a narrative behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a simplicity about the Mandela narrative where he democratised South Africa and, and freed South Africa. However, once you actually access South Africa, live here and understand the tapestry of the community, you really do start to get an understanding of the, the complexities, the groups of people who made this happen, not just one man. As someone who's not South African, living in South Africa, what was your first impression of the country? I love South Africa, always have. Came here first when I was six, travelled through South Africa various moments in my life, early 20s and then 27, made it my home. And it's a very complicated, beautiful country with, uh, I guess, probably the most powerful union of, of human spirit and forgiveness mm -hmm. and inequality in the world. And that's what makes it so complicated. There's, there's, there's massive inequality here in South Africa, mm -hmm. but there's also huge amounts of happiness and goodwill. And that's the complication, that's the, the, the complexity that is, I guess, the community of South Africa. It's interesting you explain it like that. Do you like living here? Is it going to be your home for the rest of your life? I love living here. Mm -hmm. um, we employ 50 people in this country. We, we're set up here. and. It's a, it's a stunning, stunning place. And I think that it has massive potential because if you look around now, the world's broken. Mm -hmm. No two ways about it. We're running on operating systems that are 2,000 years old. And these things are starting to unwind, to, to fall apart, to come apart. Um, population growth, huge advances in technology mean that all of these things that sort of could be controlled no longer could be controlled. You only have to look at... Um, very right-wing religion at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's pulling us apart. You only have to look at capitalism and the inequality that creates. It's pulling this planet apart. And South Africa, where 15 years ago perhaps was a place where we strived to be like the first world, mm -hmm. I think we're now in a position where we can turn around and say we're striving to do something very different here because I can walk down the streets of Cape Town, of Johannesburg and Bloom, and as an atheist, or a Christian, or a Muslim, or as a Jew, mm -hmm. I don't have a worry in the world. There are other factors that affect the way I live here. However, that commonality, and I think that that ability to be who you are, um, is is a beautiful thing. And I think South Africa went through such turmoil and such hardship that it is aware of going down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And where I think a lot of places haven't since perhaps World War Two, yeah. seen that, so it's not front of mind, and and as a result, I think South Africa really is in a position to shift the paradigm and and sort of rethink the operating system that we that we use moving forward. 